Hi, my name is Susanna Rubio, and this is my metals and jewelry show at Cal State Long Beach. Called Bittersweet. Bittersweet. And that is my show title. And why the name? Uh, I just wanted to show that, like life itself, um, even when things can be hard and tough and difficult, that there can be a real beauty that you find in those moments. So we've got all this beautiful work here, and you know, I was struck by this actually um, remarkable necklace. I don't know how long it took to make this. This took probably about 150 hours. It was quite a lot of work to get this thing complete. Um, it, each one has about uh, 75 drill holes. Wow. And each one's been hands-on and then riveted to a plate behind it and there's about another 120 rivets holding it all together. So actually, that's, I, I would say that's not a lot of time because I've done paintings that take me 150 hours. Yeah, that's hours. true. So. Uh, I just assume metal takes so much more. Well, I guess a lot of paintings don't take that many hours. But, yeah. Um, so, you know, what struck me is you've put the show up the way a metal show often is. You've made this work and you put it on these forms. But I mm -hmm. thought it was interesting that it's this kind of like white plaster lifeless form and mm -hmm. that this, this metal is so sort of alive and what would it be like against, you know, flesh? Yeah. So uh, have you worn this? Did you? I have worn it. It has... Uh, a lot of weight to it. There's an awful lot of metal there, um, but it's... So you really feel yourself wearing yeah, it. Yeah, you can feel it. And that's what this piece really was about for me, was uh, looking at kind of the way the world can weigh us down and trying to find some quiet, peaceful moments within that time. Well, you know, I mean, it's funny, you know, whether it's uh, you know, the late Steve Jobs with his black turtlenecks or, mm -hmm. or Mark Zuckerberg with his hoodies, you know, for probably since the baby boomers, we've been almost entirely about comfort above all else. Mm -hmm. But that's not the only idea in fashion and apparel and ornamentation. That's true. And sometimes maybe even something that's stiff can give you a, a, a bodily sense of presence mm -hmm. that the super comfortable clothes don't. It's true. I feel like when you have a lot of comfort, you can almost forget yourself, whereas a lot of the art that I do is about making you distinctly physical, physically aware of your own body. Um, I have uh, fibromyalgia and a few more pain disorders, so I always like in my work to include something that makes, that brings kind of like a heaviness so that you're aware of what's going on around you. So this isn't, so, you know, speaking of t-shirts and hoodies, this isn't something that you would wear very casually. You'd have to go somewhere pretty yeah. special. I think it's a pretty big statement piece. I don't think it's a casual, uh, everyday necklace. So have you worn it out or? No, I haven't worn it out. I actually have a fairly bad <laughs> copper allergy. Here in your, in your hoodie? <laughs> yeah, in my hoodie. This so oh, so like you might not wear it for oh, Yeah, for I've worn it for periods of time, but after about 10 minutes, I break out into an allergic reaction. So, so this is, is hundreds of hours of work that, that you yourself are never going to wear mm -hmm. on, on an evening. Yeah, it's a little bit sad when you think about it that way, but for me it's more about bringing this thing into the world than necessarily my own ability to enjoy it. And maybe it'll find its way onto somebody's body. It's true. Someone who's not as allergic as I am can enjoy it a bit more. So you've got these wasp nests over here, mm -hmm. which um, are really interesting, I guess, well, probably for lots of reasons, but the two sort of that come to my mind are, are one, because I always have wasps nests, yeah. you know, under the eaves of my house. And the other is that with my Art 110 students just a couple of weeks ago, we went to the beach and we were digging holes and making plaster casts of our hands. Oh, great. Um, so this is a sort of a related, but a, a little bit finer process than what we did. So, yeah. So can you, how do you, so this is a wasp nest you picked off the eave of your house? Mm -hmm. Yeah, I took it down. Um, I dipped it in wood glue so it would have a little bit more resistance and then I made a mold of it and casted the wax. Um, and before I casted it, I worked with each one. This one is a little bit more solid. This one has about half the holes cut out. And then the final piece has all the holes cut out. And so what's, what are the materials? How do you, how do you go from an, from an object to, to a metal casting of it? Uh, what you do is first I started with the wasp nest and then I took uh, a material that's used to make earbuds. So it, you combine the two materials, it's malleable for about a minute and then you mold it over the object that you want to eventually cast in metal um, and it creates a hollow shell that you can pour wax into. 
and then you take that wax and you alter it any way you want it to by cutting it, um, melting away at it, and then from there on you put it in investment which creates another hollow shell that your molten metal will be shot into with a centrifugal caster. So it's a couple of reversals. Yeah, you go back and forth from having a positive and negative over and over. So it's kind of an interesting way the shape changes as you go along. And ultimately you can get from anything, whether it's a plastic soldier or a, a paper thin wasp nest to this yeah. cast piece of metal. Yeah. Um, again, Mar, can you wear these or? These ones I can wear because I'm not as allergic to brass. Um, the honeycomb shape itself is bronze and I'm not as allergic to that either. Um, and also they're much lower down so it's not typically against my bare skin. That's when I have the worst problem. And then we have some wasps. Are they wasps in amber? Uh, they're bees actually. Okay. Um, I have an apple tree right next to my car and the pesticides that they use kill the bees. And so after they die I go through and collect them and save them. And this was just my way of kind of paying tribute to it. And so that's a, that's a resin that you've put? Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's so an epoxy resin. Analogy of, of amber, I suppose. Yes. Yeah, I couldn't get my hands on real, real insects in amber, so I had to make do. Um, and anything, so what's happening over with your, with your bug? Um, over here, this wall was about um, you and your relationship to other people. Okay. So with this piece, it was the idea of taking a jewelry box for keeping things safe. And my take on that was to make kind of a sort of creature that when you pick it up, it would make it very uncomfortable for you to keep handling it. Um, these spikes on the bottom are very sharp. And so it was my idea of protecting yourself from the outside world to kind of keep the things that are precious to you safe. And so that's why I put my wedding rings in there. They're not my wedding rings, but they're a stand-in for them. Um, and this throat plate for me was about um, when I have a lot of relatives who say a lot of really horrible, offensive things. Um, and for me, it was about that idea of bottling up those things that you can't say um, and the physical discomfort that kind of um, that kind of having to keep things inside and bottle them up in the way that would feel. So when you actually wear this, it's very, very tight and it starts pressing on your carotid artery. Wow. And so it gives you that kind of feeling of um, like penned in anxiety. You know, I have a large family and as, as the family has evolved over the years and the values have changed, sometimes the the gatherings can be stressful and it's yes. kind of funny because it's, it's this group of people that you've known you know longer than anyone else you've known in your yeah. life and 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 you don't really want to start a big screaming match over you know yeah. my ideology versus your ideology yeah but it's also kind of weird like to avoid that you do you go into superficial conversations or, yeah or, or yeah so, so i you know i'm not i, I <laughs> I feel this piece. It's, yeah. It's, um, it's, um, yeah, I feel it's a feeling that a lot of people can relate to because they're your family. You don't want to start a war over small issues, yeah. but with everyone having such different things that are important to them or different things that they believe in, um, it's hard to not kind of stand up for the things you want to believe them while, while at the same time understanding that's not worth the argument, it's not, you're not gonna change their mind, you're not gonna change anything about that situation. So. Beautiful. Um, Hassana Rubio, congratulations. Yes. Thank you. Thanks so much.